Hey, it's Alan. Welcome back. Okay, if you're following along, you just jumped through a thousand flaming hoops to install amps. And we did that so that you can store your header, nav, and footer code in their own file somewhere and then just merge them into the pages that's being delivered. And that way, if you ever change one of those sections, you only have to do it in one spot, not every single page where it exists. Now, as it stands right now, the site works just doing the right-click open in browser thing. You can see it's a, got all the good trappings. It's responsive and all the stuff is working. But pretty soon, we're going to have to go through AMPS to uh, make it work. But you'll see if I d go visit it right now through AMPS, it looks exactly like it did when I went through uh, the browser. But those days are coming to an end. Pretty soon, we'll have to go through amps to really see how it's going to look. Okay, so I have here's my home page. I don't need any of this filler text anymore, so I'm just going to take all that out of there. Doesn't say serve any useful purpose right now. Now the code that shows the header and the side nav bar is just this HTML here right under the body tag. So um, you know between header and article. So I'm going to put that out in its own file. All right. And then the uh, the footer is also the same on every page and that's all down here between these footer tags. And so I'll put that out in its own file. All right. Now if you go and look over at your folders, you might notice there's a new one called CGI hyphen bin. We don't really need that so you can delete it if you want. Okay. And as far as this uh, global content goes. I'm going to put it in its own folder and I'm going to call that assets. So click some neutral spot over here underneath all this other stuff. Then click new folder so you're sure it goes to the root. Name it assets and press enter. And so now you should just have a new folder right under that .vs code folder. Click that assets folder once to select it. Click new folder again. And let's name this one PHP. So all the content that has to be merged in via PHP will put in this folder so it's all together and we just know where it is. So now right click that PHP folder and choose new file and name this new file headernav.html. Okay, it doesn't matter what you name it, but I'm just going to call it headernav. Go back to your index.html page and grab all that code for the header and nav bar which goes from the uh, opening header to the closing nav. You can cut that right out of the page. Go back to header headernav.html and paste it in. So here's the header and nav bar code for all the pages in our site. And in the future, if we ever change something, we can just change it here, not in every single page. That's the beauty of this method. All right, so let's uh, close headernav.html and go back and click right-click PHP again and choose new file. Call this one footer.html. Okay. And go back to your index page and grab all that footer code, including the opening and closing footer tags, cut it from there, and paste it into footer.html. So here's the footer that's going to appear on every page. And again, if I decide to add or delete something there, I can just do it in this one file. I'm not going to have to go from page to page to do it. All right, then you can close footer.html. All right, now for that content to appear in the page in the browser, I'm going to have to go back to index.html and tell it where to find that code and where to put it. So you want to go back into index.html, type a less than question mark PHP, a space, a question mark, a greater than, and those tags identify where the PHP code starts and ends. So inside there, all you can type is PHP code. And we're going to put in there a variable name dollar sign ipath then equal and then dollar sign underscore server and then square brackets and then inside the square brackets a pair of quotation marks and then document underscore root and that points to the root folder for the whole site the very top and then after that we're going to put a um, a dot Wait a minute. A dot, a pair, a dot, a pair of quotation marks slash assets slash PHP slash. So after that code executes, the IPath variable in PHP contains a pointer 
to that um, subfolder where I'm going to be putting all my uh, PHP content to be merged in. Now, if you look really closely, the opening and closing tabs have green squiggles under them because HTML Hint assumes this is a web page that contains only HTML and CSS code. You can just ignore the green squiggles, or if you'd rather get rid of them, you can hide them by temper by you know disabling HTML Hint in this one project. And to do that, you would just click Extensions so you can see all your installed extensions. Click the gear for HTML Hint. Choose Disable Workspace so you just turn it off for this particular project. Then click Reload, and now the little green squiggles will be gone. Okay, we're not done writing our PHP code yet. You want to get back inside those tags right after that semicolon of that first line. Type include open paren, closing paren, dollar sign, ipath, okay, then a dot, and then a pair of quotation marks, and then you're going to put header nav.html. So as this page is about to be served, I'm telling PHP, before you send this thing out, um, go grab that header nav HTML file out of that PHP folder and stick it right here. Now, if I do view in browser, it doesn't work anymore. I get an empty page. Why? Because if I look at the source, I see the PHP code in there, but the browser doesn't know what to do with that. It has to be executed on the server side. And that's why I have to go through AMPS to view it, because when I view it from AMPS, it sends it to that Apache web server, and Apache knows what to do with the uh, PHP code, and it sticks it right there in the page. All right, so far I've only put in the header. I didn't put the footer in yet, so I have to write a little more PHP code, but you can see it works the same as before. And it looks exactly the same to the user. The only difference is I've modularized it for my convenience a bit. All right, let's grab this PHP tag, copy it down to below the closing article, now, we don't need to repeat this IPath part again. That only has to be defined once. But I do want it to include here under the article footer.html. So I'll just change that to footer.html. And then once again, I, you know, again, I can't, if I go open in default browser, I'm still not going to see the footer because, you know, no PHP is executed. I have to go through AMPS and uh, run it through the uh, web server. Now, if I already had it open in Chrome or whatever browser, I could just refresh it. You don't have to keep closing and opening it. But you can see here, if I do run it from here, I see the header and the footer and the nav bar. So it's exactly like it was before in terms of what the user experiences. But for me, I now have all that header, nav, and footer code in one place, which is going to make it easier for me to manage this because every page will just show that same code. And if I need to change it, I just change it in one place. And also, you can uh, break this after the semicolon if you don't want that big, long line there. But that's pretty much it. That's all my PHP code right there. Now, that's not to say that's all you can do with PHP. PHP is an enormous language. You could study it for a long, long time and learn to do all kinds of things. But for this particular app, all I care about right now is sharing content across pages, and I've accomplished that so far. Now, any content that's unique to a given page would go inside the article area here. All right, but I can't really do that here because that's going to be... Um, different for each page. But now if I if I view this from here now, just you know, in the browser with Apache, you can see where I put in that uh, page title right there. So the unique content of each page will be in this area. Okay, but everything else will be the same on every page. And we'll do that by repeating some code from page to page, but not all this. We're actually going to move a little more stuff out into the global area starting in lesson 15. See you there.